Hey, what's up, guys? Craft Farms here. Welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan. We are back here on field one. Gonna be finishing up flax harvest today. Uh, as you can see, we have our truck is half full already. And uh, we're working on filling it up the rest of the way. Combine only has a little bit to go here yet, so. Um, we're going to go ahead and get that finished up. And uh, while he is doing that, we are going to go ahead and we're going to take the baler up to the field and get that ready to rock and roll we also got to get our pickup out of the field i had to uh stop and refuel the combine so we got to move that as well we're going to go ahead and load up our course and then we're going to head on up to the field Now, I don't think I've actually used this uh, deer baler here that I can uh, think of anyways, so be interesting to try it out. And we will see how fast it goes through the net wrap. That's going to be the biggest thing here. Completely full there. Perfect. Oh. Got a little squirrely there. Now, because I am curious here we're going to just take a look see here so now I'm not getting a fill level for the baler why is that Okay, then. So, I guess we are not going to be using this baler. I will have to figure that out a little later, I guess, and uh, see what I can get figured out there for that. So yeah, I'll have to mess with that a little bit uh, after today's episode and see if I can figure out uh, what its deal is here. May have to use a different baler. I don't really think that I have much else. I was kind of debating on a uh, on a squirrel. 
square baler, but I don't believe that I have anything that would auto load square bales. That is, at least in terms of anything fairly decent sized. Yeah, I'll have to uh, kind of do some looking. Do I have do I have the square balers even? Like this big guy. There's this one. Yeah, I could probably use this guy here. Yeah, I'll have to, whoops. I'll have to do some uh, figuring out here off camera after this video and see what I can kind of find. I'm just going to kind of ride with this guy for a little bit. We don't have a whole terrible lot left. About another five minutes is what course play is saying. So <clears throat> I always got to remind myself here when we are supposed to sell some of this. Okay, so that's January and this is in February. Which is kind of perfect. That's around the time there supposedly is a retirement auction coming soon. And uh, looking at the listing, there seems to be some decent equipment and some things that we are looking for uh, so we might uh, go check that out they said it'll be in the spring they haven't said when yet so we got a little time to plan hopefully we can get some grain sold before it happens and then we'll have a little bit of money uh, when we go to the auction But it is going to be kind of a toss-up. Um, our good friend Dale, the salesman at our local dealership, uh, he did mention that they uh, would, if we were to buy equipment from them, they uh, would give us free uh, service contract plans, um, free warranties. We wouldn't have to pay any extra for any service contract, any warranty, none of that. So it is kind of a hard deal to pass up, but it's a bigger price tag. But it's only at the beginning. It's not overall so we're gonna kind of have to see on that one we uh we might 
just have to take him up on that offer. He's only got a couple more passes here, and then, uh, and then we're done with this, finally. And then we can get all of our machinery cleaned up, uh, fixed up, put away. what we're going to do is we're going to run over here we're going to grab the grain cart and uh, get it positioned over at the truck because as soon as that guy's done we're just going to pull it straight over here and get it unloaded we want to run everything through the scale for this flax Perfect. And this guy is done. So we'll go ahead and get this over here. Hopefully there is enough room in our truck for all of this. It looks like it's going to fit though. I'd hate to have to make another trip when we're selling just for a little bit. It's going to be close. Perfect almost full 96% there now as mentioned yesterday um, I was talking in yesterday's video about combining a lot of these fields and uh, I think we're still gonna go ahead and plan to do so um, I think it'll kinda help improve things for us and uh, in planning next year's crops I am also gonna look uh, in one of BC Bueller's informational videos what do we got going on here do you not want to let me drop this down there? What the heck here? Hmm. Okay, we're going to do it this way. Or not. Hmm. Apparently that's as low as it wants to go. 
All right, anyhow, we're going to get this cleaned up. But um, in the one of his informational videos for Edgewater, uh, he did showcase what crops are going to put out the highest yields. Uh, I want to say corn was the highest. Um, because they did put realistic yields into the map. So on a normal map, we would have gotten a lot more canola and a lot more of everything. Um, but they have realistic yields. So it kind of brought them down a little bit, but that's okay because we aren't running a whole lot of land. So to not get super huge yields is not all that out of the ordinary. So we're going to go ahead get this fixed and painted same with our head and then we're gonna go back here and unhook this header ahead and set it back where we had it. We gotta unhook our PTO first. And then we'll get this guy put back in the shed. Try and get it tucked over as far as we can here so we can get the semi put back up in here beside it. Oh, we're a little too close. There we go. Now we should be good. Alright, that guy's done until next fall. We're going to grab our 9380 here. We're going to bring this guy back next. Go ahead and tarp the uh, grain cart here. I see we will have some spraying to do next year as well. <coughs> This washed up next. And then this will get put away. Uh, the 4755 is going to stay out. Uh, it's going to go on whatever bale loader we uh, get. Or if I can figure out what's going on with that deer baler. Alright, so we're going to get this back, back in over here. And uh, unhooked. There beside our spreader. Perfect. And then we'll get this backed in right behind the combine there. too close there we go that thing is good to go we'll get our 
pick up and we'll bring this back into the yard and we're probably just going to leave it hooked up because we're most likely going to need this fuel trailer again pull it right up here and leave it set okay now we can bring our truck into the yard and we'll get this unloaded we got 1615 bushels of flax so we got a pretty decent amount Let's get this thrown into the bin here, and then we can get the rest of this stuff put away. very accurate sound for an auger. I don't think it's loud enough though. They clatter a lot more than that. At least our auger does. Anyways. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to tarp this and then get it thrown back into our shed for now and it'll come back out in January to haul in uh, some crops get this guy back in here where he goes we'll try and get it a little closer to the combine actually no well We'll put it right in that area there. Perfect. So that guy's done. We can go ahead and close this up for now. We'll only need the one door when we go to uh, go in there again. get this put back over beside our meridian oh, I can't even get this over there with that trailer there I think we might actually now while I'm thinking of it I'm gonna see if it'll fit in the door that or fit in that lean-to portion of the building 
wall hooked to the skid steer, even if it doesn't, I can actually just unhook it. And I'm thinking it's going to be a no-go. Yep. Okay. Not hooked up anyways, it won't. So, pull that through the bathroom. <laughs> um... I think we're just going to put this in the main part of the shop. We'll leave that sit in here. Actually, we're going to redo this here. We're going to move it more to the side because then we could easily fit both in here. back a little bit though. How are we looking? Perfect. we go. Now this is still going to be in our way for our other auger. Which is going to be rather annoying. So we're going to go ahead and pull this away. Get that dropping back down while we get this lid closed. So we're going to drop the auger right here quick. We're going to move this trailer out of the way so we can put our auger back. I should need to hook none of that up. Perfect. Can't do anything with it. Now let's see if we can manage to get this put back over here without hitting anything or ruining anything. And then this guy we're just going to pull up right here for right now. Alrighty, guys. Well, I'm going to figure out uh, what's going on with our baler here. And get that figured out. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to work on some baling and selling some bales. Making a little bit of money because we are starting to get down there. Um... 
Now let's make sure. Okay, we did not do anything with that. Uh, this guy we can repair and repaint. And we'll pay to clean it, I guess. This guy is good. That's good. This guy needs to get cleaned and repaired. This guy's good. Perfect. Alrighty, well, uh, I will get that figured out, and then whenever I figure out a trailer, we'll get uh, get this tractor hooked up to it, and then we'll get rolling. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll catch you all tomorrow.